Hi, okay, so I am just walking to my neighbor's house. They use their place as a summer house. I still feel guilty going up here to show people, but I don't believe they're here, but you get an overall view of my section from up here. Um, a little bit ago, I said there was a thunderstorm deluge. There was, but the weather really does change quickly here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna rotate the camera, I hope. So I'm at my neighbor's house, looking down at my site, and over there you can see the ocean. It's Mercury Bay, which is on the Coromandel Peninsula in New Zealand, and this is my section down here. We're on a corner lot. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go down and show you what's uh, happening so far down here. Um, I always feel guilty going up there, even when I know they're not home. I feel like it's, huh, it's kind of intrusion, but as soon as my first floor is on, you'll obviously be able to see better. <laughs> I'll be able to do it from my own house. So this has been a very long process, if you've read my blog. Um, but we finally have, um, by the way, this is winter. <laughs> Pretty crap, huh? I can't go in there, the builders go in there, but that's, I can't go in there, because there's no way in for me there. Um, it's been a really long process. Probably we started talking to the builder that we decided on and the design designer, who's my architect, but at the time she wasn't licensed. So I feel like I got her kind of cheap. She's licensed now though. And uh, a year and a half ago, and nearly two years ago, that's how long a process it is to get going. So, um, there used to be an old family sort of vacation place here. As you can hear, it's really quiet around here. Most of the places around here are summer homes or summer vacation places. Um, a lot more people are starting to be uh, living here full time. But we're off the water grid. We're totally on rainwater. Um, we're considered rural. Um, I'm off the gas grid. I have to get gas bottles. Um, and my nearest McDonald's is a, uh, an hour away, and my nearest traffic light is two, two hours away. So we're not exactly uh, uh, urban, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so about six. Seven. Well, let's see. I came here on August first. Today's August nineteenth, because I'm a day ahead of you Americans. In case you're counting days, um, and uh, they had done the pack down of the earth here, and our water tanks. Let me go show you those first of all. Um, our roof is going to collect rainwater, and put it into our water tanks and um, we do have sewage but not um, water tanks um, these are two 25,000 liter water tanks there's one and two they had to um, obviously they, they were put in in March or April um, something like that um, so there used to be the old family batch here. Batch is the some place word for New Zealanders use the word. And um, we tore that down late March. It was emotional for the family, but it was not, um, it's not a home to live in year round. And it was, it had rustic charm, let's put it that way. Um, and, uh, um, and then we had the rainwater tanks put in. So they have um, pumps inside them that you can access via the manholes. I think you can see the manholes if I do this. Yep. yep. And that was sort of the last thing to happen structurally until we got our contract and loan finalized in July. And then about a week before I arrived in early August, all this compact stuff that you see here got compacted down into the the sites you know to make it flat so 
um, since then, we did decide not to go with a um, like high volume builder. We've gone with a, a builder who works with architects and has a reputation on the peninsula as a great builder. He has three or four guys working with him and he's also our project manager. So you hear a lot of people say that they um, have a project manager and a builder, but we just have our builder be our project manager because whenever we watch like home shows and stuff, they always screw up. The owners usually screw up by trying to project manage them, the, the whole project themselves. And, and um, our builder has a really great reputation for project management. So um, he knows you know, the subcontractors that he wants to work with. Um, so I got here two and a half weeks ago and a lot has happened since then. So I, I didn't realize how much had to happen before a concrete foundation gets poured, basically. Um, but there's a ton of stuff that happens. So um, basically, if you sort of look around, you see that wooden sort of fence wall thing. That's gonna hold our concrete. And so that's going to be our floor level, if, the lower floor level. It's a two-story house. And um, it shows me where the lower floor level is going to be. Um, and in order to support the second story, they have to reinforce the steel. So they've dug these holes where my steel beams are. And that started as... It looked to me like a like it was going to be an easy process, but then after they they, they they dig out the hole, they measure it, and then they put in these steel things that you can see in the little grid things, and then after they've done that, they have to put on these little hook things to reinforce even more. That's going to reinforce the steel beams that are going to support my deck overhead, um, and I'll put in a link to my um, design video so you can see. So it's going to have a deck overhead. Um, and then this giant thing here is um, my little mini elevator. It's a little hydraulic lift because I want to live here till I'm 90. And um, my husband and I are going to live upstairs. And we're going to have a totally separate unit downstairs. So I want to be able to carry groceries, bottles, whatever, upstairs until I'm 90. Or say I break a hip. Um, so we're going to have a little tiny elevator here. And right now I'm standing in the garage. This probably doesn't mean much to you unless you've lived with plans like I have. But, um, yeah. So, the other thing that has to happen before they pour the slab is all the groundwork plumbing. So, this is the kitchen island plumbing in my downstairs unit, my downstairs two-bedroom unit. <laughs> and, um, I think this is what's going to go upstairs. I have to double check that. And then there's drainage water from the downstairs bathroom. There's a shower, a sink, and a, and a, um, a toilet, obviously. And I think that's probably for the sink intake over there. I'm not 100% sure what each pipe is for, but it, it sort of makes sense to me. And um, this goes in a little from, so you can see the wall goes in into in, in, it's the entrance area, the covered entrance area for the downstairs. Um, so it's going to have like an entrance there on that road, and our entrance is going to be on that road to go upstairs. Um, and then you get little uh, hiccups that happen in building processes. <laughs> this pipe has become the I call it the offending pipe because it's a wastewater pipe. And I think it's supposed to be the wastewater from upstairs. Um, this is my laundry downstairs. It's going to have separate entrances from the downstairs and upstairs so that um, uh, I can lock it from either side and in both places can use it. Um, so the plans have it going diagonally out of the house that direction. The first time the plumber put it in, he put it right through where my elevator is going to be, the lift is going to be. Second time, he's gone straight horizontal this way. <laughs> and I watched my builder slash project manager yesterday talking to someone uh, heatedly, and I'm glad I don't project manage because the, the plumber obviously has not read the plans correctly and has done it wrong twice now. 
because they dug it out. But I come over here every day to check it out, just to make sure I sort of know what's going on. So I'm basically standing in the garage, but where I am now is going to be about right. My entranceway is supported by that pit over there. And then I have stairs going up pretty much where I am now. And then I have a bedroom right over above here. And if you remember when I stood up above the neighbors, that's where you look out into the ocean. So over the next week or two, they finished putting in little hooky things. I call them hooky things to reinforce. The plumber fixes his crap. Um, and um, they pour the reinforcing around all these things that need reinforcing for steel beams. And then they come and pour the slab before they let that rest and put the framing up. So this is my edge of my wall here, here, and then, um, uh, yeah. Um, in my vision, I have the downstairs unit having a main outside space behind us here where the porta -to toilet is, um, and the beautiful garden that my in-laws have created over the past 30 years and I see our main outside area being on our deck upstairs so you can still sort of have separate areas e even when you're sitting outside sort of um, they'll be more private because they'll be just about opposite to each other um, and you can have two families staying here completely privately if you want to um, pretty sure that's a are you a thrush or a blackbird? I can never... Yeah. So these gorgeous, the gorgeous established gardens that my, my in-laws have worked over on for 30 years include mandarins, limes, lemonades. Uh, I forget what they're called. It's like a fuzzy peach, but like a peacherine. Um, tamarillos. Um, macadamias in there um, and tangelos and, uh, and we had to tear down the family lemon tree but they planted a new one for us as soon as we knew we were going to build we planted a new one um, take it through there these little white things in styrofoam they're um, actually part of what is it's called our waffle waffle foundation waffle slab foundation because we're building on sand, the engineer says we have to build on a waffle slab because it's more movable with the sand. Um, and so this is the fern garden that my in-laws have cultivated for 30 years. It has beautiful ferns and attracts a lot of native birds. Um, it's really quite gorgeous, macadamia tree. Um, yeah. It really is quite amazing. It attracts so much coolness and, and pulls pulls cool air out of the uh, back for when um, in the evening, because it gets quite hot in summer, um, to, to cool the back garden. So I think that's really going to be kind of special. So I've gone kind of a long way around, but you can see our tangelos. Yeah, you can see our tangelos. Um, so, I'm not sure if I, I accidentally hit the close button. My tangelos my, and my father-in-law put up these for me temporarily for my herbs and spring onions and stuff. These little rainwater gutters. Um, next year, next spring, I will be planting them on my deck, hopefully. Um, I'm planning for a February-March finish. Um, and my old strawberry container, that's a grape. Um, and that's our new lemon tree. It produced beautiful lemons um, this year, only a couple, but the old one used to be here where the tanks are now. So, yeah. Um, passion fruit, um, lemongrass. Uh, yeah. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty, pretty nifty. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to share my experience. It, it's pretty special. Thank you. Bye.